You have to remember, we have been here before. The Democrats made the same arguments during Clinton as the Republicans now about how unfair impeachment is. The Republicans want more subpoena power in the oversight of Trump. But during Obama, they changed rules to take subpoena power from the minority. And their rationale, oh, the irony, the Obama administration employed unprecedented delay and refused to comply. Be clear. Impeachment has always been political, and it has been about correcting and punishing abuses of power, not crimes. That's for the courts. But that is not our biggest problem right now. It's the tactics of division. That's what we're all recoiling at the most. The division, the tactics, the smears, the lies by this president, especially and those around him, because from him, the most should be expected. But we've seen that before, too. And just as now, there were calls for self-respecting, real conservatives, real Republicans, to get up and say, you know what? I don't want to win this way. I don't want to see the Republican Party win like this. While it might be a fleeting victory for the Republican Party, it would be a more lasting defeat for the American people. It is high time that we stopped thinking politically as Republicans and Democrats about elections and started thinking patriotically as Americans about national security based on individual freedom. I don't want to see the Republican Party ride to political victory on the four horsemen of calumny. Fear, ignorance, bigotry, smear. Doesn't that sound perfect? It should. Those words were perfect when spoken by one brave woman. She never gets enough credit for chopping down Senator Joe McCarthy. We always think about the, have you no decency, sir, quote, right? That was Joseph Welsh, chief counsel for the U.S. Army. He wasn't an elected. That was not the seminal moment that turned it all around. It was the declaration of conscience by Senator Margaret Chase Smith, first woman to hold seats in the House and then Senate. She was from Maine. She even got six Republicans to sign on to the declaration with her. 1,823 words. Less than that transcript of that perfect Ukraine call. But wow, did she resonate. Listen. I believe with all my heart that we must not become a nation of mental mutes blindly following demagogues. Mental mutes blindly following demagogues. She reminded those in office. People are sick of the exaggerations and hallucinations in the name of crushing opponents and just finding advantage. She reminded them, your duty was to the people, not to party alone. And you know, they were faced with a real enemy back then, communism. The irony is, you could argue Russia has never had a greater effect on our society than they did in infecting the mind of McCarthy and his lot, except for 2016 when they seem to find a way to poison all of us to the point that we're in right now, fighting each other over so little. Remember the words of Margaret Chase Smith. This is a moment that will always be remembered. It must reflect our best efforts. And impeachment cannot be about irresponsible sensationalism or smears of those on any side. The people remain divided on the prospects for this impeachment, not so much because of questions about what this president did, but questions about whether the rest of those in power are really in a position to judge him. Are they really better than what they seem to oppose? Or are politicians just switching jerseys in the same game we've seen before? Power and advantage. Please give the people a reason to believe again, Mr. and Mrs. Office Holder. If you are not man or woman enough to say it out loud like Margaret Chase Smith, then listen to her words and let it guide your actions.